Yes, so thank you for the invitation and, and the introduction. Um, it's um, a, a pleasure and challenge uh, to speak in this meeting uh, on finite model theory and, and many-valued logic. In fact, my talk is neither finite model theory nor many-valued logic, uh, uh, but um, I take from finite model theory the word finite and from many-valued logic the word many, and I make a composition out of those. And um, uh, it uh, at least it was interesting for me to, to prepare the talk, probably also interesting to give the talk, and then I hope it is interesting also to you. Um, okay, so um, um, in in Tarski's uh, truth definition, uh, uh, kind of what, what we te teach um, students, uh, the semantics of first order formulas is defined with respect to one assignment at a time for values of the free variables. Well, now I, uh, what if we instead define it with respect to a set of assignments with some rules, of course. And uh, these sets I call teams if for some reason, which is not important. And, and, and this is called team semantics. Of course, uh, th th this leaves a lot of possibilities, but, but let's see. Uh, now, uh, um, a team can be interpreted in, in, in different ways. So one way to interpret it, especially in so-called in inquisitive logic, is that it rep represents vagueness about one assignment, which we, which we may not know. Um, but it may also, also, also uh, simply represent a set of scientific experiments. And then, of course, we may think that there is some true facts uh, of matter behind these experiments. But also, if it is quantum physics, then we may be kind of Heisenbergian and, and think that there is no, no truth behind this. Everything we have is just the experiments. Mm. And of course, a database is a, is a set of assignments. Um, and um, there are many other concrete like, examples. But this vagueness, which a team represents, is perhaps the closest that comes to, um, in, my, in my talk, to many value logics. OK, so when we, when we move from um, one assignment to a set of assignments, new semantic concepts become available, for example, dependence and independence. Um, and uh, this is maybe useful because teams appear in naturally in physics, biology, mathematics, economics, statistics, computer science, social choice, theory, economics, etc. cetera. Uh, so, and of course, the concepts of dependence and independence are very uh, important in these areas. So maybe this team semantics can put some clarity to this. Okay, what I do in this talk is some, some recent work of mine with Hella, Lauri Hella and Kerko Luosto, um, which is a quantitative analysis of team properties of finite models in terms of what, what we call dimension. So he, there's a term finite, there's about finite models. So, mm, so once again, a team is a set of assignments, and the difference to, between Tarski semantics and team semantics is that we have in Tarski semantics this concept, which I denote like this, that an assignment S satisfies the formula phi in a model M. And in team semantics, we have this concept that uh, a team T satisfies a formula phi in a, in a model M. Now let's look at the, uh, the case of the atomic level. Now there is an uh, abundance of choice of ato atoms to consider uh, apart from the so-called first order atoms or first order literals um, that we know from basic logic because we can add new because we have this broader um, concept of team semantics. We can have other atoms and these are the atoms that have been studied in mainly in so far dependence atom. Uh, yeah, by, by the way, all, all, all of these are well known from dependency theory in, uh, in, in, in database theory. And so they, they are known from there. But in this, the notation now is that X determines Y. If 
if uh, for all uh, assignments S and S prime in the team, if they, they agree about X, then they agree about Y. So there's a function which maps the values of X to values of Y. A special case is when this X vector is missing. So it means that in this team, Y is constant on all, on all for all assignments. Exclusion atom values of X are all different for values of Y. Inclusion atom, all values of X occur as values of Y. And independence atom, uh, which means that the values of X and Y are independent from each other in the sense of, of, of like a Cartesian product. Uh, now the logical operations. Again, there is a variety of possibilities that can be studied and have been studied and probably many that have not been studied. But in this talk, I, I use the following, which are kind of, in my opinion, the canonical ones. Conjunction is satisfied by a team if the team satisfies both conjuncts. Disjunction is satisfied if the team divides into parts, not necessarily disjoint, the first of which satisfies phi and the second satisfies psi. So here, the vagueness, which is, inside T is sort of divided between vagueness about phi and vagueness about psi. And there's a kind of a thinking of Kleene's uh, three-valued logic in the sense that uh, a disjunct, disjunct, um, disjunction becomes true if one of them becomes true, even if the other one is still vague. Um, existential uh, quantification and universal quantification are <laughs> sort of like in first order logic, so exist X phi is satisfied by a team. If on for every assignment, we can assign with some function F a set of values, non-empty non set of values, so that the resulting new team satisfies phi. And universal quantification is satisfied by a team. If the, the bigger three team in which X is uh, given all possible values from the domain M satisfies phi. These, these come from, uh, they are exactly what comes from game theoretic semantics. That's, that's why I call them kind of canonical. But I will talk, talk later about other possibilities. So here are two slightly um, non-trivial examples. This extensively quantified formula with a dependence atom uh, says that the team, when it restricted to the free variables of this formula, X is at most half of the possible size. So at most half, it says that X is satisfied by at most half of the, I mean, uh, at most half of the possible assignments satisfied. Um, so um, R in the team. So this other formula says that the team were restricted to the free variables X has even cardinality. So not that the domain has even cardinality, but the set of assignments in the team has even cardinality. As you see here are independence atoms, inclusion atoms, uh, uh, exclusion atoms and dependence atoms. Maybe some someone can be smarter and, and write a shorter formula, I don't know, but but that's actually, a question which I will address in this uh, in this talk. The main theme logics um, uh, that are have been studied is the constancy logic, where we just add to first order logic constancy atoms. Now this is first order on sentences, but of course not on formulas because in, you cannot express this in first order logic. Dependence logic, where we add dependence atoms. This is exactly uh, downward closed. NP because of the sigma one one is NP. Inclusion logic, which is exactly P time on ordered finite models because of connection to fixed point logic and independence logic, which turns out to be exactly extensive second order logic on finite models, in fact, on all models. Okay. Um, now, the question uh, which is behind uh, this talk is how to prove non non-expressibility results in team semantics in general. EF games uh, tend to be very difficult because we are essentially in second order situations. So you, you have to make moves which are sets or relations. So it's a second order EF game, it's very difficult. 
uh, as everybody knows, the computational complexities, there are many, but uh, there are not so many separations in, in this area. I mean, uh, many open problems in computational complexity, so it's not so useful. Uh, so we try to use combinatorial methods, and here are some names which um, have previously done this work on uh, on these combinatorial methods, among others. Okay, so in order to get into this, um, what I call combinatorial, uh, I, I start to look a little bit, or we start to look at a, a little bit at the combinatorics of families of sets, because uh, the semantic value of formula is, is a set of teams, so it's a you know, family of sets of, of assignments. Okay, um, there are some na natural canonical operations like an intersection operation, okay? But here is what we call tensor disjunction operation because this, this is not a union operation operator because we take union inside, like in a tensor product. So we take elements from the script A and script B and take their unions. Uh, okay, then uh, the projection operator in which we use the function f, which uh, looks complicated, but simply leaves out the ith component from a sequence. And we get this operation, which is obviously related to extensor quantifier. And then uh, another operation in which we put all possible values into the ith place in a sequence. And we get an operator, which we call universal quantifier operator. And with these operators, we can now kind of compute the truth values by um, m, uh, x uh, in a model m and, and this x vector is a, um, a vector of three variables of, of phi. We indicate the variables because of course they can be kind of dummy variables. We can think of in terms of variables that do, do not occur in in, in phi. So here we look at this in, with respect to variables x, whether they occur in phi or not. So the, the truth value of conjunction, we get the, with the uh, intersection operator, the, the disjunction we get with the tensor disjunction operator, extensor quantifier we get with the extensor quantifier operator, universal quantifier with the universal quantifier operator. So there are these four what I call natural operators which give the truth value of, of a formula. Okay, now to, to, we we start to look at dimensions of of, of of families, and here is the definition. First of all, we call a set uh, convex if it is um, uh, closed in this natural sense. Um, it's dominated if its union is 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 a member. For the family, and then this this somewhat complicated concept, a family subfamily dominates a if there are dominated convex families A G such that their union is the family that we are investigating, and each one of them, uh, the union of each one of them is is this index set G. Okay. So the dimension of the family is then simply defined as a minimum of the cardinality of a family which dominates the family A. If this family is downward closed, which is a very common and important case, then this is simply the smallest number of power sets that cover the family. So this is the canonical um, uh, example. The smallest number of power sets that are needed to cover the family. Um, okay, and now uh, when we uh, have the truth value, which is a set of teams, so that's a family of sets for a formula phi, then we can look at the dimension in various models of size n and take the supremum. And this is a, a, a natural number and, and we get this, this kind of function, dimension function. Okay, now if phi happens to be first order, 
then the situation is, is very simple. This is simply one power set. You don't need anything else to cover this except one power set where it's the power set of the set of assignments which satisfy five. So in first order logic, the dimension of every formula is, is one. And here is an important technical computation. Here's a computation of each of the atoms. So the constancy atom, the, the dimension is, is n, so that's kind of linear. Dependence atom, n to the n to the n to the k, where k is the length of the of, of this x vector, exclusion to the n to the k minus two, inclusion atom to the n to the k minus n to the k, in, uh, independence atom, then this, this formula. What they exactly are is not so important. The, the order of magnitude is, is important. And it is kind of interesting that here is this difference uh, of, in the exponent of, of logarithmic um, difference. But these are exact values. Um, by the way, we, there are also some which have a very big dimension, bigger than those, uh, like at most one half, and and even even number of uh, assignments in the team. That property has a maximal dimension. Um, now, when we look at this, um, sorry, I will uh, skip the growth class, it's, it's the, and I go to the topic topic of uh, preservation of dimension under relevant operators. As you remember, the truth values of formulas were defined using in uh, for operators. And now we look at some abstract properties of, of such operators. So that delta P, any operator from the power set of power set of X, the power set of power set of Y or the nth power. So in totally abstract context, we say that this is a Kripke operator if there's a relation R such that membership in delta of k0 to n as one is decided by the existence of this a0 to a n as one, which are in this R relation. So this is called Kripke because this is like the accessibility. This R is like an accessibility relation and, and um, this B, is in this delta if the, this relation R tells whether B is accessible from, from this. And as it happens, intersection of families is a Kripke operator, tensor disjunction is, and this projection and universal quantifier operator are Kripke operators. Another property, we say that an operator weakly preserves dominated convexity. If the result under this operation operator is dominated and convex or empty whenever the arguments are dominated and convex. And now here is a them, very important theorem in this, in this talk. If we have a Kripke operator which weakly preserves dominated convexity, then the dimension of the result is at most the product of the dimensions of the arguments. Now a product may seem like, like, like a lot, but we are talking about double exponential numbers so their product is not very not very big it's you just add the exponents it's, it's kind of in this context this this means almost like addition and mind you the operators that we need to define the classical logical operations as we have presented them they are Kripke operators which uh, weakly preserve dominated convexity so all these operators preserve dimension up to, I mean, what we call growth class. So up to a polynomial in the in, in the exponent. So, um, um, okay. Now let's look at two applications of this. Um, so maybe I, I mentioned this construct. So we. The concept of growth class here is that we look at mappings from n to n, uh, and a, sub, a set of such mappings is a growth class if it is closed downward in this sense, and it is closed under sums and, and products. And then the natural growth classes here are such functions for which there is a polynomial p of degree k such that f is at most two to, two to the p, p and fk 
um, this polynomial such that fn is at most n to the polynomial. This comes, uh, the relevance of this comes from, from this. Here is n to the polynomial and here is two to the polynomial. So these are in the E class and these are in the F class. Okay, so now uh, the first application. Uh, so let's call an, uh, a dependence atom uh, KRE. Um, if the length of the argument here is K and, and inclusion KRE, if they're both sequence are, are length K and independence atom also K plus L if, if if this is O length K and this is O length L. Now the result is that a dependence logic, inclusion logic, and independence logic each has a proper definability hierarchy inside them, even in the empty vocabulary for formulas based on the arity of the non-first order atoms. So um, you, you, you just need to look at the, the arity of the atoms of a formula that you have there, and the logical operations don't change the growth the growth class. So that means that with such a formula, you cannot define something in which the arity is higher inside the logic. Uh, this, it's, it's very important that this is for formulas and not, not for sentences, because really the, the, in, for sentences, there are no, no, the only team is the empty, uh, that, uh, in singleton, the only interesting team is the, the team which contains the empty assignment. And another uh, similar application, the KRE dependence atom is not definable in the extension of first log logic by less than KRE dependence, or in fact, any other KRE, whatever atoms, and nor by less than or equal to KRE independence inclusion constant atoms and any Lindstrom quantifiers I didn't mention, but there is an operator for any Lindstrom quantifier. There's an operator like for extensible universal quantifier, and they they also are uh, preserved dimensions. So you cannot get the go up in the in the dimension even using whatever Lindstrom quantifiers you have. And similarly for inclusion, KRE inclusion is not definable from from less than KRE inclusion dependence or constancy for Lindstrom quantifiers. So uh, we get this very strong um, uh, um, strong hierarchy results. Uh, again, I, I, I emphasize that it's it's a different, completely different story if one wants such results for for uh, sentences, and then one can use, for example, Ita's uh, hierarchy result for sigma one one. Uh, on, on finite models, but uh, but then this is for uh, for formulas, and they the when the formulas have um, um, free variables like k free variables from the second or a logic point of view, it is like having a KRE relation uh, variable. Okay, now let, let's look at some other logical uh, operate, operators, operations. Um, um, the first one is this, uh, what, what is called uh, um, intuitionistic implication. So a team satisfies this implication if every sub-team which satisfies phi, satisfies psi. So this is exactly like in moral logic or enforcing in set theory. This is like a, a stronger condition because it, there's less vagueness when you go to a, uh, the strongest possible is a singleton uh, when there is no vagueness at all. The, another is um, um, so-called intuitionistic dis disjunction which, which looks like it, it, it should be the most natural disjunction, but in this context, it is not actually so natural, but anyway, it's a matter of, of taste. This is um, uh, defined in this way. So here the vagueness somehow has to completely go to phi or completely to psi. And um, this is uh, uh, like in intuitionistic logic, a, 
if if a disjunction is valid, then one of the disjuncts is is valid, no provable. Um, the disjunction property of also I think in modal logic suburbs. Uh, then there exists one again. This uh, this says that for some single element A of the model. If, if that A is substituted everywhere to X in the team, phi is true. This looks the most natural that there, there, there could be, but in fact, as I will indicate it, from some point of view, it is not so natural. Uh, and for all one, similarly, for all values A, if that is substituted to X, the team satisfies phi. These are, by the way, used in so-called in, in inquisitive, mm, inquisitive um, uh, logic. In fact, all of these. Um, I say that they are not so natural. Uh, I don't mean it as criticism uh, of inquisitive logic, which is very natural in its own uh, um, in, in in its own perspective. Um, there is no no right uh, choices here, but in uh, but in in the in the perspective of this talk and from the point of view of dimension, it is interesting that these operations, which look most natural, especially the quantifiers, they all increase dimension. So um, there's something more complicated there than in the, the definitions that I have given because these in increase. So for example, the dependence atom can be defined using the for all one quantifier and then something which has just a constant uh, the constancy atom. So this all here has just linear depend, uh, dimension, but this has exponential dimension. So therefore, these quantifiers cannot. Sorry, sorry Yoko, just so you know, you have three minutes, three minutes yes. left. Yes. Thank you. Uh, constancy atom can be defined using the exist one quantifier. So this is uh, dimension one and this is dimension n. So this cannot preserve dimension. Um, again, uh, um, dependence atom can be defined from constancy atoms and, and intuitionistic implication. And, so this this is exponential this is linear so the implication must be exponential okay so uh, and and it is the same with uh, linstrom quantifier so in summary uh, the team semantics well while it's not many valued maybe in the traditional sense but uh, maybe there is something there which may be interesting and may benefit from the many valued perspective with the dimension concept that I introduced, one can prove hierarchy results inside team semantics uh, for formulas. Uh, and one can reveal subtle qualitative differences between logical operations, of which there are many, and probably many which I haven't mentioned. And um, finally, our approach is very general, very abstract. It, it has, basically, it has nothing to do with logic. It's just combinatorics of finite sets. So. It might have some interest in just finite combinatorics. Thank you.